When we're looking at multiplying and dividing things involving exponents, the rules are actually quite simple. Let's begin with multiplication. When we multiply, we look for things that have the same base. For example, here we have x squared y to the fifth, x to the seventh y to the ninth. We're going to take the x's from each of the parentheses and put them together. x to the second is x times x. x to the seventh is x times itself seven times. Put those together, you have x to the ninth. Notice a nice shortcut for this. x to the second, x to the seventh. Take those two exponents, 2 plus 7, and that gives you the exponent for the product, x to the ninth. Now let's take a look at the y's, y to the fifth and y to the ninth. We know we can just add the exponents together, 5 plus 9, to get 14. Again, the reason for that is this. Our first parenthesis has 5 y's. Our second parenthesis has 9 of them. We add them together. We have 14, which is y to the 14th. In our notes, our first example beautifully demonstrates this property. We have x's in both cases, and we have an exponent of 7 and an exponent of 2. We combine the things that are the same. 7 plus 2 is 9, so we have x to the 9. How about number 2? See if you can simplify that one. Pause the video here, and then come on back. y to the fourth times y to the third. 4 plus 3 is 7. That gives us y to the seventh. The third example is a little strange, and you probably would never write it out like this. But I wanted to show you the nice properties of exponents. 5 to the second times 6 to the second times 6 to the third. We can't combine the fives and the sixes, but we can combine the sixes. 6 to the second times 6 to the third is 6 to the fifth. So we could write this 5 squared times 6 squared times 6 cubed as 5 squared times 6 to the fifth. Now, of course, you probably would never do that. You'd probably put the numbers in your calculator. You'd come up with 194,400. But I thought it very beautifully showed, especially with the sixes, how you can write things using exponents. My favorite example so far is number four. We have negative 9x squared times 2x to the third. We'll multiply the negative 9 and the 2, and then we'll multiply the x's. Negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. x squared, x to the third, 2 plus 3, x to the fifth. So the product is negative 18, x to the fifth. Now, here's one for you to try. 5x to the fifth times 7x to the third. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 plus 3, the exponents on the x, is 8. So 35x to the 8. Speaking of which, what if we had y's in there also? Well, we already did the numbers, the 5 and the 7. We already did the x's. Now we just have to do the y's. y to the 8 times y to the 10th is y to the 18th. Here's one just like that for you to try. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 of the 5th times 8 of the 7th. We'll add that 5 and that 7 to get 8 of the 12th. b to the 6th times b to the 2nd. Add that 6 and that 2. We get b to the 8th. Now, how about division? Well. If you thought multiplication was easy, division is also. Instead of adding, we subtract. x to the 9 over x to the 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. So that gives us x to the 5th. Now why on earth is that? Well, we have 9 x's on the top, 4 of them on the bottom. Let's go through and start canceling them out one by one. Notice what I'm left with, x to the 5th. Number six is for you to try. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. A to the ninth divided by A to the second. We subtract those exponents, and we have A to the seventh. Now let's look at something a little more exciting. Here we have on example seven, 
multiplication, and division put together into one problem. Let's start at the top. x to the 8th times x to the 2nd. That gives me x to the 10th. And I have x to the 7th down on the bottom. Now I'm dividing. Now I subtract. 10 minus 7 is 3. So x to the 3rd is my simplified fraction. Number 8 is also exciting. Number 8, we have three different variables. We have x's, y's, and z's. We simply go one letter at a time. We'll do the x's. 7 minus 2 is 5, so we have x to the fifth. Now let's do the y's. 3 minus 2 is 1, so we have y to the first. Finally, let's look at the z's. z to the fifth over z to the first. Remember, if no exponent is written, it's automatically a 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. That gives us x to the fifth, y, z to the fourth. How about number 9? Why don't you give this one a try? Pause the video, and then come on back. We'll take a look at your work. Let's see how you did. We begin by simplifying the 4 and the 2. The 2 becomes a 1, and the 4 becomes a 2 in the denominator. Now we subtract. A's. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. A to the negative 3. Let's look at the B's. 3 minus 2 is 1. B to the first. Now let's look at the C's. 5 minus 2 is 3. C to the third. Now let's clean this up just a little bit. We see we have a to the negative 3 on the top. That a is going to come back down as a to the third. That leaves me with my b to the first, c to the third up top, and 2a to the third down in the denominator. Take a look at number 10. Oh boy. Here we have some division and we have negative exponents. Few ways you could approach this, but my favorite way is to just take the things and move them around so that my exponents are positive. I'll move my x to the third up top and my x to the seventh down the bottom. Notice that the coefficients, the 12 and the 6, stayed right where they were. Now we can divide. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. So we have 2x to the negative 4, and of course anything with a negative exponent has to move down to the bottom, and so we have 2 over x to the fourth. Here's one for you to try, number 11. Please pause the video here, and let's take a look and see how you do. In number 11, we began by moving things around. We moved our d to the third to the bottom, and our d to the first up top. Now we'll subtract. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So we have 4d to the negative 2, which means the d is going to go in the denominator with the c. How about number 12? Let's see how you do here. Here we take 6 divided by 3 is 2. We'll take our x's, 3 minus 3, x to the 0, and we just have our y to the 5th down at the bottom. x to the 0 is 1. So we have 2 times 1, or simply 2, over y to the fifth. Example 13 is another fun one. We're going to go ahead and multiply first, take care of the numerator, and we'll do the division last. Please pause here, and let's give it a try. In the top, we have negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. n to the second, and n to the sixth which is n to the 8th. We have on the bottom negative 5 n to the 6th. Now, 12 and 5 do not simplify, although they're both negative, so my answer will become positive. We have our n's, 8 minus 6, which is 2, so we have 12 n squared over 5. Number 14, our final example. Please pause the video here and give this one a try. Let's see how you did. Negative 10 times negative 7 is 70. P to the 7th. On the bottom, we have negative 8P to the 4th. 
Now we can go ahead and simplify. We'll reduce our fraction, and then we'll divide our piece. 70 divided by negative 8 becomes negative 35 over 4. And we'll look at our p's. 7 minus 4 is 3. So we have negative 35 p to the third over 4. So here's everything you need to know about exponents. When you multiply, you simply add the exponents of things that are the same. Take your x's, take your y's, take your z's, and add the exponents of each letter. When you divide, you do the same thing except you subtract. When you have them combined, do your multiplication up on the top or down in the bottom first, and then do your division. This is everything you need to know about multiplying and dividing basic expressions containing exponents.